Have you ever wondered if the story you tell about a person, how you understand their past, affects how you think about them, whether or not you can forgive them or even like them? And that's what we'll talk about today. I remember that my husband would play and I would love to sing and nothing else mattered. But when we had Coco, there was something that mattered more than music. I wanted to put down roots and he wanted to play for the world. We each made a sacrifice to get what we want. And now you must make a choice. Mama Mamelda, the movie Coco. Today we're going to talk about the movie Coco, which comes from Disney And it is a great movie about family, sacrifice, and forgiveness. So in this time of Easter and Passover, thinking about forgiving other people becomes a big thought in my mind. I mentioned before that I struggled quite a bit because of the family I had and because of the situations I had. And I didn't talk much about them, but even my extended family could at times be very hard to love. Very prickly people people who were unkind many times. But then when I was traveling this weekend, I was with someone and they reminded me that when a family experiences something that is horrible tragedy and her family and my family both experienced a tragedy which was on a worldwide scale, her family came out of it with mental health issues. My family came out of it with mental health issues. But when I was young and I had, of course, the intolerance of a moral value that a young person comes up with who doesn't understand the people around them. It's easy when you're a kid to say, this is a moral thing to do and there's just no exception to it. And then when you get older, you realize that people do things for reasons and they may be bad reasons, but they are reasons. And not only that, it never struck me to think about how mental illness played a part in my relatives' lives. They went through something horrible. That not only puts an impact on the people who went through that horrible thing and the mental illness that goes around it, but then it goes on to the children and it becomes a generational mental illness. And I never thought about it in terms of that these were hurt people who were damaged. And... Not everyone comes back from it perfectly. And who doesn't become damaged by something that hurts them in their lives and doesn't quite come back as a perfect human being? It's pretty much all of us. And so when I watched the movie Coco, that's what it really struck me about. So we're going to talk a little bit about this movie and how it means for us to look at other people, including our families, and think about forgiveness. If you haven't seen the movie Coco, it really is a beautiful movie. I can't think of many other movies that are cartoons and even from Disney, which is known for having incredible art that is so beautiful like this movie Coco. And it starts out talking about a 12-year-old boy who's living in Mexico and has a very big family. His name is Miguel and he loves music. He loves music more than anything. But the problem is The family has a ban on anything musical. They're not allowed to play music. Nobody sings music. They are a shoemaker family, and that's all that matters. When Miguel acts out or becomes sad about the fact that he can't play music, he loves to play the guitar and sing, his family decides that the best thing for him is to make him a shoemaker, just like everybody else in the family. And that's where it really goes wrong, because... Miguel is beautiful at singing. He has a talent for it. Shoemaking is not his thing, but he loves and respects his family so much. He wants to make them happy. And there's no doubt that they want him to be happy too, but just not with anything musically related. And it turns out it's because Grandma Imelda was married to a musician and he went on the road to play his music for other towns and other places and maybe to become a famous musician. He left and never came back. And so she ended up having to raise her daughter, Coco, all alone. And so then became the family ban on anything musical. And there's nothing you can do about it. This family hates music. 
So what does a boy do when he's talented at music, loves his family, but they refuse to allow him to do the very thing he was meant to do, he was born to do, and he's great at? Remember, that's the Iki guy, right? He found his thing very young in life. But now what happens? So through a series of events, he ends up going to the land of the dead, running into his family. But he's not dead. And so his family is trying to get him to come back to the world of the living. Because bad things start to happen when a live person goes to the world of the dead. Miguel's a good-natured boy, but the one condition that was placed on him to return to the land of the living was to no longer play music. He rejected it. He would rather be dead and live in the land of the dead and be away from his family that he loves if that meant not playing music. So he ends up running away inside the land of the dead and running into a fellow named Hector. And Hector's sweet and he's charming and he's down on his luck and he's nearing the end of his time in the land of the dead. When no one in your family remembers you anymore, you start to disappear. And that is beginning to happen to Hector. So Miguel, being a good-natured boy, offers to help him too. But we still have to find a way to help Miguel, to help Hector, to get him back to the world of the living. So Miguel figures out who he thinks his father is. He thinks his father is a world-famous musician. So the secret to all of this is to escape, to look for his father who can then send him back to the world of the living without the ban on music. Of course, his father would understand that music means everything to him. Now, if you haven't seen the movie Coco, this is probably a good time to stop, go see the movie, and then continue on with this podcast because I'm going to tell you spoilers about the movie. Okay, did everyone go away? Cool. So now, as Miguel goes and looks for who he thinks is his father, Ernesto, who is a famous actor, musician. He goes and looks for him. And the person he thinks is his father accepts him and is ready to send him back. But then the truth becomes apparent to Ernesto that this actually is not his relative, but instead is the relative of the person who wrote all the music he sang, his partner in music when they were alive. And he can't send Miguel back to the land of the living because that secret would get out now. The secret that Ernesto never wrote his own music. And the worst secret of all, Ernesto was the one who killed his father just to keep those secrets that Ernesto, this very famous musician, never wrote any of his own songs. So as a bunch of incidents happen, the family of Miguel finds Hector, finds out the truth that Hector was the guy who went out with Ernesto, wrote all the beautiful music, never got credit for any of it, and then was murdered to keep the secret. The first stage of forgiveness becomes in the world of the dead. When the whole story comes out and can Imelda forgive Hector for leaving them? And when she finds out he intended to come back and be a part of the family, that's when the healing started to happen. And what struck me as interesting about all of this is it's that perfect situation of mind reading. We believe that we can read each other's minds. When someone does something to us that is damaging, we believe that we can read their minds, entirely tell you why that is, and then make a judgment on them. When this family learned the truth of what really happened, and that's where they were able to begin to forgive. But what if in real life, while they were still alive, they didn't try to read each other's minds? Imelda didn't try to imagine that Hector left and never came back because he was awful and because music is awful. Maybe she could leave room for the possibility that something happened or there was a misunderstanding or what she thought was a story is not really the story at all. That would have led to generations of music being banned for the family, lifted from the family. That would have meant that all the hurt and anger towards Hector would have been gone and there would have been forgiveness 
generations earlier. And so that's where mind reading becomes so damaging. The second part that comes into mind reading is that Ernesto, who's a national treasure that everyone loves, turns out to be the bad guy, took our mind reading abilities as a society and made Ernesto the hero. He's handsome. He's musical. He's a star of all these movies. He must be the hero of the story. That's how heroes go. But in reality, he was the villain. And Hector, who looks like he's had a pretty bad life, nobody remembers him anymore. He must have done something pretty terrible, is the true hero in this because he did try to come back to be with his family. And so the first stage of forgiveness and realization comes in in the land of the dead. Miguel comes back because of all the forgiveness and the family coming back together again, and now is again with his real life family. And he no longer has the rule that he has to give up on music. And as he comes back to the land of the living, he decides because now his family is even more important to him, he will willingly give up music because that's what his family expects, even if they didn't make him promise to do so. And when he talked to his relatives, he found out that actually they love music. They don't want him to give up on it. And the story comes out to the family. And now, once again, everyone in that family is allowed to have music in their lives. And the interesting thing I thought about it is every single member of his living family could sing or play an instrument, which makes me wonder, were they also secretly playing music as not to offend their family and kept it quiet? So I think what's interesting about this movie is this was a generations and generations of a family that was hurt. They banished something lovely like music because of that hurt. What comes in our families? What comes in our lives that is damaging us or hurting us because we don't understand the full story? Can I at times be hurt because my family wasn't particularly loving? much of the time? Or do I come with some sort of understanding that they went through something really horrible and their lack of the outer signs of love, the common things you think of when a family loves you, wasn't there for them, not because they didn't love me, because they were so hurt by people in the past and they never overcame it. And so can we come up with that understanding so that we can be with our families Maybe not doing everything that they hoped we would do, like Miguel playing music, but loving them in the way that matters the most with forgiveness and grace and an understanding about their past. Can the family who went through this understand that past hurts, while they can't be forgotten, should be forgiven and should be moved on from so that not only can the forgiveness heal the relationships, but that that person themselves can start to heal. If they are burning in their own past with hate and anger and hurt and fear, it's also damaging them too. And it's keeping them from moving on in their own lives. And so, of course, in the end, that forgiveness brought the family back together. It brought Hector back from being forgotten And now a whole new generation of that family remembers Hector and loves him like he always wished. And now Hector has Coco in the land of the dead where he can sing to her like he always wished she could. My challenge to you is rewrite somebody's story. Maybe someone you're struggling to have a relationship with. You're already mind reading. You're already playing prosecutor and already judging their lives in ways you probably don't have any right or knowledge to do a good job or the proper knowledge to know exactly what's going on with that person. So now let's rewrite their story in a different way. What kind of childhood did they have? What kind of pathway did they take to getting to this place where they are the person that you're struggling with? Is there another story you can write for them that will help you to forgive, help you to understand them better, and help you to have a better relationship with them going forward. Find that one person and write them a new story. It's not that this story will be true, 
But the last story you told about them probably wasn't true either. So now's your chance to do a better job at writing a story. See if that helps your relationship going forward. And in the next two podcasts, we'll talk a little bit more about a book about how to get reconciliation with the people in your life who make you crazy, who may be also family members. Maybe they're not family members, but they could be. So our quote comes today from, of course, the movie Coco. Papa Ernesto, my blessing. Security. Thank you for freeing Miguel. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes to seize your moment. I know you understand. No! <laughs> Ernesto never understood. He lost his fame. He lost his reputation, both in the land of the living and the land of the dead, because he took good productivity quotes and became an evil jerk who would go as far as killing his best friend and shoving a poor kid into a pit. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Have a great week. And if you remember to tell someone that maybe they could start to forgive their family by taking small steps 